coming up next from San Fran Freak Show, the Savage Nation, from Talk 910 KNEW. Warning. The Michael Savage Show contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Here is Michael Savage. Nation. I'm not Michael Savage. I'm not the good doctor. This is Chris Markowski sitting in for the good doctor. 800-449-TALK is a number. You can be a part of the program. Oh, well, I got breaking news here, guys. Good news here. Wow, look at this. Barack Obama backs offshore drilling. You hear that, people? Extra, extra, right here on the Savage Nation. Breaking news. Barack Obama backs offshore drilling. Oh, wait a second here. Oh, we got to read the fine print. Oh, he's backing offshore drilling, not for the United States, but for Brazil. Oh, hey, oh, you know what? Better yet. Here we go. We, the taxpayers, we're sending $2 billion to Brazil so they can drill off their shores. And who's the company that's getting the money down in there, Brazil? Well, it happens to be owned by George Soros. Guys, couldn't make this stuff up if I wanted to. I know that this uh, story is going to warm the good doctor's heart. George Soros, George Soros is like Dr. Evil, Spectra, and you know, Dr. No all rolled into one. And, and it, it makes me wonder if he is not the guy, if he is not the man behind the curtain pulling the strings for Barack Hussein Obama. Really, seriously. And the funny thing is, is George Soros bought a large position in the stock in this Brazilian company right before this deal went through. Ooh, how come I'm not hearing calls from insider trading? Anyway, we got Al on the phone from San Francisco. Al, welcome to Savage Nation. Yeah, back at public option, we have public and private universities. They coexist in choices. Competition benefit all students. And tell me, why do we need insurance companies when they inflate, super inflate cost? Uh, okay, we'll go through this point by point. What business are you in, Al? Uh, that is in Jermaine. What's that? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not in a business. Okay. Um, let's 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 play pretend, Al. Um, Al, let's say Al, you own a restaurant. Let's say you own a restaurant, and you've got a good customer base, and you serve good food, and the people come in the door all the time. And let's say the government says, you know what? We are going to open up a restaurant next door to your restaurant. Yet the government is not concerned with marketing costs. They're not even concerned with making money. They're not concerned with any because it doesn't matter. Because they make the rules and they have a blank check. They can write as much as they want. How long do you think your restaurant would stay in business for? Okay, the fact of the matter is... No, no, no I asked my question. How long do you think your restaurant would stay in business for under those conditions? But you didn't answer my question about public and private universities. What is your question in regards to public and private universities? Coexist and choices and competition benefit all students. We've had public and private universities for 200 years. Public and private universities, people still pay. They still pay. They still have major endowments. Their alumni still give money to them. That is an absolutely silly analogy. Can you name for me, Al, one government program that has worked correctly? I was really ticked off, Al, quite honestly. I was really aggravated when the whole cash for clunkers thing started. The reason why I was aggravated was is I didn't have a clunker. I've got some nice cars. They're fuel efficient. I didn't have a clunker. So basically, my tax dollars were going to be used to buy someone else's car, old car. And I couldn't even have the car. They were just going to go ahead and destroy the car. And we watched this whole debacle come down. Used car dealerships. They've been here in this country for decades. The government can't run a used car dealership program right. And you are going to allow them 
to take control of one-sixth of our nation's economy. Al, I believe in health care reform. I really do. And if you've been listening to the program, I'm an advocate of what we should be providing. True health insurance. High deductible health insurance. You own a car, Al, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you have to pay car insurance? Yes. Does your employer provide the car insurance? No. Does the government provide your car insurance? Absolutely not. But would you let me respond, sir? Uh, The VA hospital runs very well. No, it doesn't run very well. It doesn't run very well. That's not true at all. It doesn't run very well. I mean, you're talking about putting 300 million people, 300 million people on a program. I mean, think about that for a second. How is that possible? Social Security is going bankrupt. That's a fact. Medicare is trillions of dollars in the hole. Al, I'd say, you know what, let the government take over health care if they could run any of those programs correctly, but they haven't proven it. Uh-huh. I mean, you, you haven't, the government has pro- not proven to be responsible in any of their endeavors. Most seniors like their Medicare program. But it doesn't make any difference whether they like it or not. It's going bankrupt. The money has to come from somewhere. Uh-huh. Eventually there's going to be, you know, everybody, everybody loved having Bernie Madoff as their investment advisor. He was great. This is this basically the same thing. Oh, Bernie, he was great. Well, man, I got great returns. I saw 14, 15% a year, every single year, never lost any money. Well, what happened? Point, I agree with you, and that's uh, this inflation of the resume of Teddy Kennedy. The mainstream media does it all the time. The Medal of Freedom was given to Reverend Joseph Lowry of Atlanta. Yes. And he's just a hustler. He solves no problems. I'm pretty sure you are aware that Atlanta currently has a crime wave. Well, they're not the only place. In these black communities, and I'm black, by the way, in these black communities, we have these hustlers always getting praised, and they solve nothing. The people who solve stuff in all these communities, and what I'm an advocate for, is small businesses. Getting capital to people so they can go and they can open up their own store and create and build. That's what makes this country great. We have a lot. You know where health, I don't know if you're aware of this, Al. Do you know where health insurance actually started in this country? You know when it started? No. It started during World War II. The government put wage controls on businesses here in the United States because so many American men were off fighting in the Pacific, in Europe, all over the globe. That they didn't want businesses to have to pay ridiculous levels to bring people in and then put others out of business. Once again, the government getting involved in the free market puts wage controls on. So what do businesses start to do? Well, you know what? To get around it, so we can attract workers, we're going to offer benefits. We'll offer health care. We'll offer retirement plans. That's when it started. Why not just go back to the way it was before World War II? It's as simple as that. You take all the middlemen out. You take all the middlemen out. You make it a relationship between the patient and the doctor. Not the patient, the insurance company, the insurance company bureaucracy and the doctor. And then now the, the patient, the government, your congressman, your senator, some bureaucratic panel, and the doctor. Make it simple. How could this idea be so great if it's over a thousand pages long? How long is our Constitution? You know the original Social Security bill? The original Social Security bill was only 37 pages long. Think about that for a second. Al, I appreciate the phone call. Thanks for listening to the program here. Uh, we got uh, we got Glenn from Ohio. Glenn, welcome to Savage Nation. Well, Chris, thank you very much. We appreciate you taking my call. A couple of comments on the Medicare and health insurance plan. You know, I think that, that it, it not paying up to $1,000 and then getting coverage, which is common, uh, typical, the thing is, is any medical expense that an individual has that is under $1,000, nobody pays. He's responsible to pay himself. And if he does that, it's going to stop this hangnail and snuff, snuffy well, nose. I, I, you know, you're exa- Glenn, I don't know if you, if, how long you've been tuned into the program. We have that. Bush put that into play with the uh, HSAs and the high deductible insurance. That's what I have. I'm going to explain it again, okay, to everybody out there. This is available. This is available. And if everybody would just get their employer to say, hey, you know what? I don't want you to provide for me health insurance. I want you to give me the money that you pay to the health insurance company. I want to go shop for my own. I have a $5,600 deductible. 
that's the maximum you can have. It should be much higher for certain people. 